Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is your uh, Goindraj. Thank you very much for watching my previous videos. Uh, on higher pension option, I've, I've actually made a lot of videos uh, so far and I provided uh, many information and uh, thank you very much for sharing these uh, videos. And also in the previous videos, I have also talked about what are the disclaimers and challenges you have in the higher pension option. See. Uh, whether this higher pension option benefits or not it depends on various uh, factors and uh, it definitely benefits for certain people under certain uh, conditions for example if you don't want to take risk and if you are not financially savvy you are not very much aware of the market instruments and you are not planning your financial properly but you want to somehow manage and uh, take a continued uh, you know money or a sustained money for longer time so this all depends on uh, how you are financially uh, managing your funds and then you can very well uh, manage and then uh, continue your investment now in this video let me give you nine reasons why you should not opt for higher pension it doesn't mean that you should not opt for it because as i told you here uh, it depends on your individual situations your individual interest and how you, you are well acquaintance with the knowledge of the market everything depends on but i will give you nine reasons uh, probably it will help you to decide your case properly and before filing this uh, joint option please do watch this video and also share it with your uh, friends now the first uh, thing which is a challenge which you are going to face with the higher uh, pension option is as i told you the ep uh, epfo uh, the contributions which which the employer is making towards eps has been done to the ceiling amount which is 6500 before 19 2014 and uh, after 19 2014 it is 15,000 rupees now because if your salary is more if at all you are going to get a uh, higher pension you are going to really be eligible for higher pension option then you have to contribute on uh, actual wages at 8.33 percent your employer contributions actually have to be segregated into uh, account number 10 this account number 10 and account number 1 and all I have already uh, clarified in the previous videos you can watch that also so therefore when this exercise is done your current accumulation and the provident fund will definitely will reduce and in the future also you continue to contribute at 8.33 percent on actual wages to the eps that means your employer contributions will get segregated into 8.33 percent and 3.67 percent uh, it will get segregated and therefore the accumulations which you are going to uh, have in your provident fund account will be definitely re will be reduced to that extent so therefore this your pf accumulations you will have to be very careful and another uh, you know point which you need to be aware the second point is uh, if at all if your provident fund account is uh, account number one the balance is insufficient and because of this readjustment you may have to pay, pay back the difference contributions to the epf and if you don't have the proper fund now so then it will actually cost you and if at all you are looking for a lump sum uh, higher uh, amount at the end of your uh, career or at the date of exit then to the extent of 8.33 percent so will definitely will be a uh, you know a segregated into uh, account number 10 that amount will not be available for you and uh, account number one what happens is when you start contributing it in the uh, you know uh, provident fund the cumulative interest effect will not be there for you if you go for eps because the pension option will work uh, based on how much fund is available in the eps account so therefore if you are looking for the greater lump sum and the cumulative interest uh, effect so that will not be there that is the third reason which is i am giving you and also before exercising this option you have to definitely make sure that this opportunity cost benefit uh, analysis you have done because how much you are going to get because of this higher pension option uh, if you invest separately in the market and if you keep it uh, in the pension account so what is that benefit you are going to get that analysis you have to do so therefore that is the fourth reason why you should not uh, you know opt for higher pension now another important uh, point which is coming here is uh, even in the Supreme Court judgment, the EPS scheme can always be modified uh, according to the needs of the provident fund, uh, provident fund organization. So therefore, if the formula 
uh, what is today is available is going to be modified in the future that may actually give you certain disadvantage and the current benefits which are being given now may not be continued or so such a possibility is always there even in the supreme court uh, you know judgment on 4th november 2022 section 7 of epf and miscellaneous provisions act 1952 is held to be valid so therefore this threat is always there this modification of the formula and benefits under the EPS, the EPFO and the central government has the power to modify the scheme. So when they modify, it should not work disadvantage to you. So therefore, that fifth reason you should be uh, important. Now, the sixth reason what I am giving you is, suppose you have a long career. Now, today your employer is contributing on higher wages, but if you leave this company and go to new employer and the future employer may not be willing to contribute on higher wages. So that is very important. And how the formula works, 60 months average salary is important for uh, pension calculation. At the end of your career, if your employer is not contributing on actual wages, that will be a big disadvantage and the money which is paid to EPS is not going to come back to you. So therefore, this threat you should be very important. And the seventh reason why you should not opt for is in the EPS, there is no return of corpus. The corpus is not going to come back at any point of time. What you will get is the pension at the exit date of the employee as per the conditions of the EPS or retire on retirement, the employee is going to get pension as per the formula and after his death or her death, the spouse is going to get pension at 50%. After that, there is no benefit is available. So therefore, that is the seventh reason why you should not opt for higher pension. Now, uh, the eighth reason what I am going to give you is uh, the pension what it gets fixed uh, at the time of exit or the retirement there is no enhancement is going to happen because the inflation is going to vary but if because the positive inflation changes leads to lesser uh, you know take home in your hands so that uh, the neutralization currently is not available under the EPS as far as I am aware so therefore that is the eighth reason you should know why you should not choose for uh, higher pension option and the ninth reason which is the last reason which I am going to give you is if at all EPS is going to work for you your life expectancy has to be at least minimum five to seven years from the date of exit if that is the case then only you are going to recover the amount and with the interest what you have paid to the EPS so therefore if your life if you cannot expect your life expectancy for at least five to seven years after uh, your exit date or retirement date then this doesn't benefit so therefore that is the ninth reason so considering this all these factors you have to decide whether higher pension option is beneficial or not and then only you should uh, take this option so th though i have told you nine reasons uh, but there are certain advantages and if you don't want to take much risk and if you want to have a sustained uh, pension, you can still choose this option. Thank you very much for watching this video friends and see you soon in the new video with new information.